Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on Channel 12 News at 1. I am Yemi Dalimo. President Muhammad Buhari has engaged two Spanish companies doing business in Nigeria, assuring them of a safe, secure, and prosperous country. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has the reports. First to be engaged by the president was GB Foods, which grows tomatoes in Kebi State with about 5,000 employees. President Buhari told the executive members of the company that although the tractors are working hard against government efforts, nothing will be left to chance at ensuring that the entire country is fully secured. He also assured local farmers of adequate protection against smuggling and dumping of foreign products, reaffirming that Nigeria wants to grow what the people eat and eat what they grow. He thanked the company owners for their huge investment in Nigeria, the jobs they create, and skills imparted to the people. Chairman of GB Foods, Arthur Karula, said the company, now in its third generation in Africa, invested over $250 billion in countries like Nigeria, Algeria, Ghana, and Senegal. GB Foods pledged that in about two years, it will be en route to supplying 30% of Nigeria's tomato needs, replicating what has happened with rice. At another meeting with Nataji, a leading Spanish gas company, the president expressed pleasure that the outfit has established a steady partnership with Nigeria in the oil and gas industry. The chief executive officer of the company, Francisco Ruins, said its first contact with Nigeria was in 1992, and since then they have become one of the largest buyers of liquefied natural gas. He said Nataji is interested in extending its relationship with Nigeria by investing more on gas, citing its 178 years' experience in the business. From Madrid, Spain, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the federal government says it will continue to aggressively protect and defend the interests of all law-abiding Nigerians abroad. President Muhammad Buhari, who said this at an interactive engagement with the cross-section of Nigerians in Spain, promised free, fair, and credible 2023 elections as well as transmission to the next government. State of Musambo again has the report. At the meeting were the leadership and some members of the Nigerian community in Spain, including businessmen, student representatives, and professional soccer players. The Nigerian community here has been growing every year uh, because of uh, the opportunity that uh, Spain offers to many of us. Uh, we are doing our, our very best to make sure that we represent Nigerians well by projecting the good image of Nigeria and avoiding anything that will tarnish the image of Nigeria. We have 80,000 documented Nigerians in Spain and um, I, as the head of mission, am driving it within the limits of power and rule of law without compromising anything that uh, may be uh, an infraction. President Muhammad Buhari described as pleasing to always meet with Nigerians in the diaspora whenever he travels abroad commending those in Spain for being law-abiding and worthy ambassadors of Nigeria. I believe that you are aware of how important your character, conduct, and comportment in your daily activities define your roles as ambassadors of Nigeria abroad. I wish to reassure all of you in Spain of the determination of the federal government of Nigeria to continue to remain engaged with our compatriots in the diaspora for more purposeful partnership that impact our country and people. He said despite the challenges of containing terrorist activities and other forms of threats to national security as well as the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, his administration remains committed to addressing the infrastructure deficit with a view to creating the enabling environment for collective prosperity. Our unity in diversity has always been our strength. I therefore call on all Nigerians, including those of you in diaspora, to join hands with us in building the Nigeria we desperately want. We have started the process leading 
to our national election in 2023. Our government is working tirelessly to ensure that the independent National Electoral Commission delivers credible, free and fair elections and a smooth transition to the next democratic government. This is with a view concretizing our democracy and being an example to other African countries. Chairman Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabri Erewa, coordinated the interactive engagement. The key thing is he's following what everybody is doing and ensuring that we also um, engage with them and ensure that they are carried on along with the programs and policies of the federal government. I think that's just the key thing. How do Nigerians at home work with Nigerians in the diaspora to build a country of our dreams? Nobody can do it alone. So, and that is always the president's message. Ours is to follow up and ensure that those engagements turn to positive productivity for our country, Nigeria. One of the professional footballers in Spain, Kenneth Omeru, presented to President Muhammad Buhari a football case and jerseys in appreciation of his support for sports, especially the Super Eagles. From Madrid, Spain, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. The group CEO NMPC Limited, Blake Yari, has restricted his commitment to sustain the strategic energy partnership between Nigeria and Spain. A statement by Grabadim Mohammed, Group General Manager, Group Public Affairs Division, NMPC Limited, says Kiari disclosed the while addressing Nigerian and Spanish business leaders on investment opportunities in the Nigerian oil and gas industry in Madrid, Spain, on the sidelines of President Mohamed Buhari's state visit to Spain, describing the partnership between Nigeria and Spain as an important one for the NMPC. GMD CEO said 26% of all LNG produced in Nigeria ends up in Spain. It trades that Spain is an important market for the company. He already explained that the world would need energy for today and for the future in industries. He says NNPC and Nigeria know that energy transition is real. Net zero by 2050 to 2060 is also real, but it doesn't mean zero hydrocarbons in 2050 to 2016. It's about having a cleaner use of hydrocarbons, noting that in line with the global acceptance of gas as a transition fuel, Nigeria has since declared 2021 to 2030 as decade of gas. So politics now, ahead of the forthcoming All Progressive Congress APC presidential primary election, former Lagos State Governor Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu has called on all the 99 Oyo State Party delegates to remain steadfast in support of his administration. Kayode Oladusu was at the consultative meeting. Receiving the presidential aspirant and his entourage with a rousing welcome to the state, party leaders and members of All Progressives Congress, APC in your State, convoked on Ibadan in solidarity to support Bola Ahmed Tinubu's presidential aspiration. He held the delegates that the unity, progress and development of Nigeria, irrespective of religion and geopolitical affiliation, would remain his ultimate goal when he becomes the president. The national leader of APC was in Oyo State with Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu and his counterpart from Kano, Abdullah Umar Ganduje, with other party stalwarts. In Ibadan, Kadeo Ladushu, NTA News. And here in Abelkuta, former Lagos State presidential aspirant of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Tinumbu, says he will pursue the social, economic, and all-round development of the country if elected at the polls. The aspirant made the promise in Abelkuta while meeting with the party delegates to the presidential primary scheduled for June 6 and 7, 2022. The report. The APC stalwart and one of the presidential aspirants of the party, Ashwaju Bola Tinumbu, who was accompanied by governors of Lagos and Kano State, said he decided to vie for the highest political position in the country to bring more development to every sector of the nation's economy. The political strategy says he has contributed immensely to political development of the country and supported many aspirants to attain their goals, explaining that he is offering himself for the service of the nation. 
Ogun State Governor Dako Abiodun, who described Ashwaju Bola Tinumbu as builder of bridges, mentor, and dogged leader, promised that delegates from the state will do the right thing at the coming presidential primary schedule for next week. Our leader, our people have listened to you very well. I'm sure they've digested everything you've said. Rest assured that we will do the right thing. You've made a case for why you believe that you have earned this position that you are seeking. Our leader, may God grant you the desires of your heart. A man with several policy capable of re-engineering the course of this nation. Former Bono State Governor Senator Kashim Shetima and Chairman of APC in Ogun State, Eda Yemi Sanusi, say the aspirant will not disappoint the party and Nigerians if given the ticket. In a As Nigeria joins global community to celebrate this year's Bicycle Day, federal government in collaboration with Ogun State government and some stakeholders promise to create a workable platform to encourage Nigerians towards maximizing the inherent benefits in cycling. This was the fallout of the 2022 Bicycle Day celebration in Nabelkuta, Ogun State, organized by the Federal Road Safety Corps. Lekon Agmode got details in a subsequent bulletin. Moving on to business news, local and foreign companies withdraw 69.32% of investment projects as customs seize 828 bags of foreign rice and others in Benin and Lagos State. Details in our business news segment. The Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission says investment commitment declined from $8.41 billion in the fourth quarter of 2021 to $2.58 billion within the same period in 2022. This shows that investment commitment declined by 69.32% from first quarter 2021 to first quarter 2022, according to the report of investment commitments in Nigeria, January to March 2022, by NIPC. According to the report, the investment commitment in first quarter 2022 cut across at three projects and five states alongside the federal capital territory. Chokoto State attracted the highest investment commitment of $1.05 billion, which is 41% of total commitments. It is followed by Lagos State with $0.88 billion, which is 34% of the entire commitment. The Western Maritime Command of Nigerian Customs Service says between February and March 2022, it seized 828 bags of foreign parboy rice between Benin Republic and Lagos State. The Customs Area Controller in charge of the command, Abubakar Umar, said 503 out of the 828 bags of rice seized by the command were from Benin Republic. He also said that 136 bags of the commodity were seized from Oniru. Page, noting that total duty paid value of the 6828 bags of rice was 29.684 million naira. That's it on business news. It's about to use studio. From business news, we now move on to entertainment news. Nollywood actor Jim Ike has spoken out on his alleged conversion to Islam. The actor made headlines when it was alleged that he had abandoned his faith for Islam religion. A Twitter user stated that he heard that the veteran had reverted to Islamic religion and congratulated him. Hours after the news went viral, Jim Ike took to his Instagram page and said the pictures making the rounds of him in Muslim attire was from a movie he shot in Ghana. Popular Nigerian singer Omar Lay took to his Twitter account to announce the release of his new album titled Boy Alone, which is set for release on 24th June 2022. In the tweet, the superstar posted about how the past few days have been the hardest day of his life, suggesting the hard work, exertion, and mental drain that comes with making an album. And lastly, following the untimely death of popular photocourt influencer Crystal Bell, who died as a result of complications from a botched plastic surgery done here in Nigeria. Actress Anita Joseph has addressed ladies. Anita Joseph took to her timeline to address ladies, telling them to stop seeking validation from other people and desist from getting intimidated by girls with large backside. Rather, they should love their God given body and work on their self esteem. Thank Cynthia Ogun will now bring us details from the world of sports. <laughs>
Super Eagles coach Jose Pizarro has blamed the Super Eagles' loss to absence of VAR and a center referee denying the team a clear chance penalty. The former African champions Friday morning lost 0-1 to Ecuador in their second international friendly in the USA. Nigeria, who lost to Mexico 2-1 in the first games, will be returning from the USA tour empty-handed. Elsewhere, Super Eagles defender Kenneth Omero, alongside the sports minister Sunday Dari in Madrid, the capital of Spain presented a jersey to President Mohamed Buhari on his visit. The president who left Nigeria for Spain had met with the Spanish president to sign a number of bilateral deals, including sports development. Amero, who plays for Spanish side, is one of Nigeria's longest standing members of the current Super Eagles. And finally, the Handball Federation of Nigeria has promised a spectacular second phase tournament in Lagos in what will be 50 years of handball in the country. This came after the first phase of the competition was rounded off Thursday in Abuja. Our referees can be seen at the international stage too, and not just uh, do things at a local level. So we're trying to do everything possible to see how we can keep upgrading the quality of the league. What was obtained in the last four edition was not as fantastic as this, and that shows a synergy within the board members and the same time the family of handball. First phase winners, Canopolis, completed an unbeaten round of 11 games, defeating Lagos Seasiders 40 to 33 goals, with safety shooters beating Niger United 26 to 23 goals. With sports update, Cynthia Ogun, NCA News. The custodian of Olumoro Deity in Abelkuta and the acclaimed oldest woman in Ogun State, Mrs. Sinatu Adukesoni, popularly known as Yaolumo, has died at the age of 137. One of her sons, Solomon Adil, who confirmed the death of the renowned traditional historian and tour guide of the popular Abelkuta Tourist Center, Ulumo Rog, said she died at a Itoku Abelkuta residence after a brief illness. The famous tourist center used to be the hideout during the inter-tribal war many years ago in Abelkuta, and it is do divulge peculiar information about the rock to tourists who visited the famous tourist center in Ogun State for knowledge, research, or other purposes. Late Madame Sinotu Aduke Sonny lived under the Ulumo Rock for more than 40 years and was popularly as the mother of the deity. May our soul rest. So that knows that we wrap up the news for this hour. We thank you for watching. Join us 7 p.m. for more and comprehensive news. Good afternoon.